set set the record to go. Oh, Mark. Uh, yeah, all set, all recorded. Yeah. Okay, right. So I just uh, I really wanted to just share um, a, a message with us this morning that I think will uh, just focus us on really what I believe God wants to do. Uh, in this time and it's really this growing stronger digging deeper pressing forward um, I mean I think we we have to acknowledge the situation that we're in it's just it is uh, unprecedented uh, without doubt and I think you know we are uh, you know people are very unwell our hospitals are overloaded uh, we're all stuck indoors businesses have basically shut down um, and you know there are lots of people asking questions well why has this happened what why um, are we in this this situation and what's going to happen next and how is this going to change well I want to just start by saying that, that first of all I don't uh, I don't presume to know the mind of the Lord uh, on these things um, I am far too uh, small I think in the, in the great schemes of God to understand uh, the great picture but I suppose I, I, I could make a few predictions uh, that I suppose I feel have come out of some kind of prayer uh, about really what is going to happen in the future uh, and what I think is about uh, it is coming down the track and hopefully that will shed some light on really what I believe God is speaking to us uh, in this time and and the first thing is uh, that I believe in front of us there's going to be a huge economic impact uh, the economic impact and the fallout uh, of of this crisis that we're going through it is potentially uh, going to be absolutely uh, monumental. Uh, and I think that w the reality is, is that many of us are going to be financially poorer. Uh, businesses are going to often going to go out of business. Many of them, uh, even big ones are going to struggle. Um, governments are going to be financially weak for a long time. Investment is going to be challenging. And, and what that's going to do, I think, and what I, I suppose what I see the Lord doing in all of that, is God is undermining the God of materialism that we've made in the West. We've become very obsessed with money and things and uh, possessions, but I think what God is doing is he is undermining that, and we will see that we can't rely in the same way uh, going forward in the things that we have done before. The second thing that I think is going to happen is that people are, in general are going to become much more aware of their mortality of the fact that uh really life is fragile uh, very fragile and in fact we we think that we're almost we've been always tricked into thinking that somehow we're almost invincible and that you know barring uh, one or two things going wrong we we're pretty secure but i think what we're we're seeing around the world is people realizing that there's that our bodies are fragile and actually you know, it's it's really hard, and and doctors, like for example, in Italy, are having to make decisions about life and death, and 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 we're reminded, aren't we, of how mortal and how fragile we actually really are. And you know, that's what I think is going to happen. But I think really those things uh, are, I suppose, secondary to what I believe God is wanting to do, primarily, which is really all about the church, because as as we know. The church is what God is really interested in on the earth. He is interested in building his church. His church is his body, uh, which expresses his life on the earth. It is what God is doing in the nations. He is building his church. And so for me, I see, uh, when we think about the impact of COVID-19, what we're going to see is, yeah, there's going to be a huge economic impact. There's going to be a greater awareness of our mortality. But I think that what God is seeking to do is to awaken the church. He is seeking to awaken uh, the church and he is seeking to bring us back to really a, a fresh move because if the church gets hold of God in this season, you know, that's true. The economic impact will be for a period of time. Sooner or later, the world will recover right sooner or later humanity will forget about our mortality and go back to the way we were but as the church awakens as the church steps into all that god is that will be an, have an eternal impact in people's lives which will be not forgotten throughout the ages 
And I believe this is what God is challenging us because uh, about this morning and through this season, and I, I quoted, and you can see here, um, uh, an old song. And some of you might remember this song, some of you might not. It's a Matt Redman song. And it, it said, when the music fades and all is stripped away, and I simply come longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. Well, the reality is this morning that quite literally the music has faded. We can't sing in the same way we used to. Um, even if you're live streaming, you've got the best band, you can't sing all together in the same way you did before. Our programs are being stripped away. The things that we rely on are being stripped away. And God is essentially, I believe, doing an amazing work of restructuring and reorganizing and reworking things in the church, not just in our church, but right across uh, our nation, across the world. And, and why is he doing that? What is he doing uh, to do this? I believe it's because he wants to see and outwork something much deeper. And this is where the phrase uh, growing stronger, digging deeper, uh, pressing forward comes in, because I believe that's what God is calling us to do as a church in this time. And, and I think it's just so important. And, you know, this isn't unusual. This is what happens in the life of the church throughout history. Um, uh, and what we see uh, throughout uh, history, uh, and I want us just to read uh, our first passage this morning, which is this, Acts chapter 8, uh, verses 1 to 5. Uh, and it says, And there arose on that day a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem. And so the church had been formed. Uh, Jesus had gone into heaven. The Holy Spirit had come. The church had gone boom in Jerusalem. And there were thousands and thousands meeting together all over Jerusalem. And then God allows or uses persecution. Because what happens in this next line? It says, uh, the great person came against the church in Jerusalem and they were scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Uh, devout men buried Stephen and made great lamentation over him and Saul was ravaging the church and entering house after house he dragged off men and women and committed them to prison and this is the key verse now those who were scattered went about preaching the word God from time to time orchestrates dramatic events to have dramatic impact on the church and I believe that's what we're experiencing a season of you know, we are going to experience economic difficulties. We're going to experience a, an awareness of mortality or our own fragility, our inability to really cope with these things. But it's what happens to the church that I believe is really where the real meaning and answer happens. Uh, and we find, or, or we find the real meaning and answer to what's going on in the world. And we are in a time where God is shaking us really for the first time, I suppose, in about 60 years, probably since about World War II. And, and I suppose this is the word that I believe God wants to challenge us with. And it's, it's really a simple word. And it came um, out of uh, a combination of something that David said uh, during the week about finding Jesus in, in ordinary places. And so I don't know about you, but this week I've been walking around looking to see Jesus in ordinary places. Uh, and I'll be honest, uh, I, I was struggling and I wasn't really getting any inspiration. And then yesterday, uh, I went bike riding with my children. Uh, and I took, first of all, Aaron, uh, who was relearning how to ride his bike. Uh, and then I took my older boys out for a long ride. And do you know what? I suddenly started to see Jesus uh, in that experience, in that moment. And I realized that Jesus is much like I was trying to be, helping my little boy Aaron to ride. And I sent him out a little WhatsApp video. Um, and I'm going to come back to that and use that as a frame of reference. This is the word that I believe God wants to speak to us this morning about our lives. It's really simple, right? God is removing the stabilizers. God is removing the stabilizers in your life and in my life, right? The things that used to prop us up spiritually, God is seeking to remove, right? And um, the reason he wants to do that is because the truth is we can become dependent on things other than the Lord Jesus Christ himself. You know, we don't need so many of the things that we put into our Christian life, right? and so many of the things that we put into church life. 
the truth is when they can like when I, I uh, when it's stripped away the truth is we don't really need it because all we need is the lord jesus christ and one another all right that's really what we need in order to thrive as christians so many of the other things are helpful but they're not essential but the trouble is so often we can become dependent on things like a good worship experience you know we all love to go to church and enjoy singing and worshiping together um, but we can suddenly become dependent on that experience week by week we can become dependent on it uh, and in an unhealthy way uh, we can become dependent on worship leaders uh, or bands to kind of help bring us closer to god and rather than those experiences being an overflow of our own worship, we're almost looking to them saying, will you do the work for me? And God is saying, I'm going to remove that stabilizer. You're not going to have that anymore. We can even become lazy, you know, looking to teachers and preachers to tell us what the Bible says, rather than loving, the, just reading the word ourselves and hearing God speak to us now don't get me wrong we need teachers God clearly ordains the need for teachers in his word but you know if we're depending on what someone else is telling us over our own love of just being in God's word of being in his presence being able to sit in my prayer chair and commune with God one-to-one -one, then we're depending on something that God hasn't intended and God is removing the stabilizers you know we can become dependent on money, on comfort, to block out the tough realities of life. We can be dependent on the gym to help us feel like we're, we're achieving something rather than just coming to the Lord and enjoying him. We can be dependent on Netflix to take away our boredom rather than spending time with God. You know, God is the thing that we will enjoy forever and eternity. And yet we, we pleasure ourselves on, on things that are fleeting. We can almost be dependent sometimes on other people to come around and do things for us or carry us when we're struggling rather than hearing God speak to our life, ourselves. You know, if you're worried or struggling, you can hear the Lord this morning speak to you. And I believe what God is doing is God is removing the stabilizers. I mean, you saw that little video, didn't you, of Aaron cycling, uh, which I shared around. And, and um, uh, you know, the thing about... Uh, about these things is that god doesn't want us to live on stabilizers you know if you're only on stabilizers the truth is you're going to have to stick to flat uh boring parks where you can just cycle around nice comfortable easy paths after i'd helped aaron go bike riding yesterday i actually took my older boys cycling uh nathan and reuben and we uh, we took a long ride and a difficult ride through scabry woods um uh, making sure we kept our, our distance from anyone we we went past um and it was a lot more difficult. Uh, they had to get up and walk in some sections, you know. It was dangerous. Uh, we had to go sort of down quite fast down some gravelly uh, wooded paths with big tree roots that you could fall off. And in fact, Reuben did fall off and hurt himself. But he had to get up and get back on again. Uh, but it's more exciting. And you see, I believe the Lord wants to release us in our own Christian life. I think the Lord wants to release the church into riding in the woods again, not just rolling around on stabilizers. And I'm trusting that you're all saying amen, because I can't hear anyone, but I'm just, uh, I, I believe that's what God is saying. And, and, you know, so often we can be baby Christians, when really we should be mature Christians. We're rolling around on stabilizers when we should be riding through the woods. And uh, this, this passage, Paul is challenging the Corinthian church, and he's saying this. He said, but brothers, I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as babies, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now you're not ready, for you're still of the flesh. And you, can you hear Paul's cr heart cry when he's reading this, writing this letter to the Corinthians? He's saying, guys, you know, it was okay at the beginning. Stabilizers are necessary to get you started. But they're not meant to be how we're to live our Christian life. We're meant to be able to ride free through the woods and do the dangerous and the exciting and the difficult bits. But instead, you're, you're instead of, uh, I'm mixing my metaphors here, but instead of kind of, you know, having proper food, we're still on baby milk. And this morning, I want to just challenge us that God, I believe, is removing the stabilizers in the church 
He's removing the stabilizers in your life, in my life. And he's saying, guys, I want you to come back to being dependent on me. I want you to grow stronger. I want you to dig deeper. I want you to push forward. That's the word of the Lord to us this morning. And if the church gets hold of that over the next few months, boy, the impact on that will be resonate through eternity. It will resonate through eternity. And so this morning, I just want us to think really quickly about what it means to go to grow stronger, to dig deeper, and to press forward. And so uh, just in terms of growing stronger, you know, uh, I want to just read you, I, I don't think I've put it into my presentation, but 2, two Timothy uh, chapter 2, verses 1 to 4 says this, You then, my child, be strengthened in the grace that is in Jesus Christ. And what you heard from me in the presence of many witnesses in trust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Share in suffering as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. You know, Timothy is Paul is encouraging Timothy in this passage to get stronger. And we get stronger through hardship. We get stronger through difficulty. When Aaron is learning to ride his bike, right, it is a tough experience. He wanted to give up so many times yesterday. Oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. But he had to endure hardship in order to grow. And, you know, you, I love the passage. This, this passage calls us soldiers of Jesus Christ. You and I are soldiers of the King of Kings. And, you know, it challenges us here to give up civilian pursuits. It says give up civilian pursuits. And I want to ask you the question this morning. What are the civilian pursuits that you are engaged in that you ought not to be? You know, in these months ahead, are you going to spend all of your time when you're not doing something like work, watching endless hours of Netflix or Amazon Prime or BritBox or Disney Plus or whichever one it is? Are you going to fill your soul with all kinds of trash or are we going to allow God to speak to us? Are we going to play endless hours of Candy Crush or whatever game it is that we play on our phones? Will we spend hours entangling ourselves with civilian pursuits or will we use this time to grow stronger in God? Because this is the point that God wants us to take off our stabilizers and get stronger. I don't know if those of you that read uh, yesterday's Bible reading scheme, uh, will we'll have read this little devotional passage, which was just so good. And it talked about you grow stronger by repetition. Now, I know some of us go to the gym here. Uh, Terry Banchik's a lover of the gym. Uh, you can see him down the gym all the time. Uh, and, uh, uh, but, you know, if you go to the gym, what you do is you repeat the same thing again and again. You lift the same weights again and again. And, you know, if we want to grow stronger with God over this period, we're going to have to do the same things again. We're going to have to read our Bible. We're going to have to pray. We're going to have to spend time with him again and again and again. And that's how we grow stronger. What about uh, digging deeper? Uh, well, how do we dig deeper? Well, you know, I want to ask you, are you willing to become a student of the word of God? Will you take this time to read the Bible properly? Not just skim it or select nice verses that you're faves, but go deep, dig deep into the word of God to really think through the challenging passages, things like about forgiveness or about holiness, about living for Jesus? Will you take an effort, make an effort to understand the bits that you don't get or don't make sense to you? You know, we, we don't, you know, teachers are helpful. We're going to need teachers in our life, but we need to be diggers. We need to be men and women that dig into the scripture, into the word of God. And that's the challenge for us this morning. Will we dig deep into God? And lastly, will we press forward? You know, when, when the, guy, the boys were riding yesterday, you know, they were riding some difficult paths. And I want to ask you, will you allow God to change, take you on some more challenging paths in the coming weeks, months, and years ahead? Right? Will we press forward with God and allow God to use us uh, to take us to places that we didn't think that he, we could take us? Because that's the challenge. We are, we are to, to grow stronger, dig deeper, and press forward. And so that's really what my heart is for us this morning. But I want to leave us with some encouragement because although this is a real challenge to us, praise God that Jesus doesn't leave us to do this 
on our own. And I just want to share lastly, just three simple quick lessons that I learned from teaching my little boy to ride yesterday. The first is this, all right? The teacher holds and pushes a lot. You know, when you're teaching someone to ride a bike, you hold on to them a lot. And I want to tell you this morning that as you learn to take off your stabilizers, Jesus is holding on to you the whole time, right? I never let Aaron get into any difficulty that was beyond what he could deal with. I didn't just let him, you know, kind of crash out into the road or whatever, right? And I held on to him. I pushed him when he was struggling and I, I was nudging him and balancing, always holding him. And the teacher holds on a lot in the early days of learning to ride a bike. Secondly, oh, a learner falls off a lot. We need to appreciate that we are going to fall off a lot, right? When we learn to ride our bike, right, spiritually, we're going to come off on a regular basis. But that's okay, because that's how we learn. And you know, if you're going to take an adventure with God, if you're going to press forward, you're going to fall off. And that's okay. All right. But lastly, this, right? A teacher encourages a lot. I don't know if you can hear in the video that I, I set, shared you, you know, all the time I'm running alongside Aaron and I'm kind of, you can do it. You can do it. Come on. You're doing amazing. Keep going. Don't hit the goalpost. Yeah. All right. It, it's, it's, it's all about encouragement. And Jesus this morning is cheering you on every single step of the way. Right, Jesus wants you to grow stronger, to dig deeper, to press forward. But he is running alongside you the whole time saying, you can do it. You can do it. And so this morning, that's it. I just want us to respond to that. And we're going to have a, um, a time, if we can, of just, uh, just briefly, uh, of just praying um, to the Lord. If you want to respond, um, you can. Uh, if you want to say uh, just just a simple yes, Jesus, I'm saying yes to you. I want to grow stronger. I want to uh, dig deep. I want to press forward. Then I want to encourage you, uh, even if it's just really short, just to say yes, Jesus, uh, on this on this group chat. And we're just going to say yes because this is what God is doing. I believe if we respond to Him, then you know who knows what the Lord will do with our lives as we go forward. Amen. Amen. So let's just pray, shall we? Let's pray. If you want to, if you want to just say yes, you don't have to. It doesn't have to be long. Please don't pray for a long time. Just maybe one or two sentences. That if, you're, if you want to say yes to Jesus this morning, uh, then I just want you to just say one or two sentences. Uh, amen. Yes, Lord, I want to grow stronger. I want to become bolder with you, Lord. Amen. 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 Yes, Lord.